Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the default toolbar buttons in Reaper. So the default toolbar buttons are right up here. These are the buttons that come with when we first install Reaper. I should also mention we can customize these toolbars by right-clicking and switching it to any of the custom toolbars we can create, 1 through 16. We could also customize this toolbar, change out the buttons, remove some, add some to trigger anything we want. But we're not going to focus on customizing it in this video. I've already created a few other videos for that. In this one, we're going to focus on the default. But I should also mention that I'm not the biggest fan of using the toolbar buttons to trigger their function. It can be a bit slower to find them and click them, although they're a great visual tool to see what mode we're in. So I'll be showing you some alternative ways to trigger the same actions or behaviors. But let's go through these. The first one over here is going to create a new project. So if we click it, Reaper opens up a new project. We could also go to the File menu and choose it right here, New Project. We'll use the keyboard shortcut right over here. The next option is going to open a project. So if we choose this, it's going to open up our Explorer on PC or the Finder on Mac, where we could choose existing projects. But we should also note we could open this project in a new tab right here, or open it up with all effects offline in recovery mode if you're trying to troubleshoot your system. That opens up our projects. Or we can go to the File menu and choose the same thing from here, Open Project. Or use the keyboard shortcut over here. The next button is going to save our project. Just click it and it saves it. We can do the same thing in the file menu. Save our project from here, or use the keyboard shortcut right here. Again, some of these are a bit quicker in the menu or the keyboard shortcut. The next option is our project settings. If we choose this, it opens up the settings that are specific to this project. It's not global like our preferences, it's just based on this project. Settings like the sample rate, the tempo, the time signature, where the media goes, or how it handles video. This is all set up in the project settings. And we can choose that from this button right here. Or we can use the menu on the file right down here. Now there's no keyboard shortcuts to trigger this, but you can always create your own. If you go to the Actions menu and just search this action. Next, we have Undo and Redo. Let's select an item and cut it. Then we can go to this button right here and undo that action. And it undoes that delete. Or we could redo it right here and go back and forth as much as we want. In fact, we could do multiple undos. So we could delete this one, then this one, then this one, and go back and undo each one, one at a time, or redo them one at a time. And if we want to see the undo history, we can just right click either button. That opens up the undo history, where we can see all the changes we made and even go back and choose them. But we could do the same thing in the edit menu. We could undo, we can redo, or we can view the undo history. And there's a keyboard shortcut for each one of these options. Then the next button turns on the metronome or the click track. Click it once to turn it on, click it again to turn it off. Or we could right click it and it opens up our settings for the metronome. Turn it on and off from here and change all the settings in this dialog. We can do the same thing 
in the Options menu, go right down here and enable our metronome, or open up the settings from here. This is off by default. The next option is on by default, and it's going to auto crossfade our items when we drag them on top of each other. For example, let's grab this item and drag it over here, and it creates a crossfade from this one to this one. If you don't want that, just turn this off. And after we drag it, it puts it on top of it and either combines it or replaces it. And that's decided if we right click the button right here. If we want to trim content behind media items when editing. But we turn it on and off from here or just hitting the button. When it's on, it's going to crossfade, fading this one to this one. And turning it off, it doesn't. It places it over it or replaces what's under it. And again, this is on by default. Then this button turns on or off item grouping. So let's select these three items and let's group them by typing G. And now we can see the items are grouped right here. So we can move them all together or treat them like one item. But we could turn off that behavior right here. And that turns track grouping off. They're still part of the group, but they're not going to behave as a group. So if I move this one, it moves completely separately from this one or this one. But if we turn track grouping back on, they behave as a group. So moving one of them moves them all. And that's track grouping right over here. But we could also turn it on and off in the options menu, go down here to item grouping, enable. Or we could use the keyboard shortcut right over here, which tends to be a bit quicker. Now the next button over here turns on ripple editing. Now there's two different modes to choose from, but let's start with the first one. Normally with it off, and it's off by default, if we grab an item and move it, it just moves that item. But if we turn on ripple editing, it's going to move that item and all the items in front of it at the same time, like this. Or if I grab this one, just the items in front of it get moved, not the ones before, which is very helpful for editing narration or dealing with video where you want to move everything at the same time. For example, we could delete this item and everything on this side gets moved over. Delete this one, same thing. So it could be really helpful with certain workflows. But as you can tell, it's only working on this track. So if we created more items up here, if we move this item, it only moves these items on this track. Because the mode we're using is ripple editing per track. But there's still another mode we could use. If we hit the button again, it changes to ripple editing all tracks. So now, if I move this item, it moves all the items that are in this side of this one as well. So if I move this one, all these items get moved. Because now it's based on all the tracks. And we choose those modes one at a time. Right now, it's off. Right now, it's per track. And right now, it's all tracks. Or we could right click and choose it from here per track, all tracks, or none. And this is off by default. And we could also choose it in the options menu. Ripple edit per track, all tracks, or just choose neither. And this item over here decides if the automation gets moved with our items. Let's draw in some automation on this track. I'll draw in an envelope. Now, by default, with this on, 
if we move this item, the automation moves with it. But if we don't want that behavior, we could just turn it off right here. And now if we move the item, the automation stays behind. So they don't move together. And we could right click right here and choose some other options with it. But by default, our envelope points are going to move when we edit our items. So it's on. Then this button turns the grid on and off. If we look right here, we see grid lines in the arrangement window. We could turn those off right over here, off and on. And right next to it, we can decide if our items are going to snap to that grid. If we turn it off and we move our items, they don't snap to the grid. They move freely. But if we turn this on, snapping, now they're going to snap to the grid, like this. So we can turn that on and off with these two buttons, for our grid and for snapping. Or we could right click either one and it opens up this dialog. Where we could edit our grid or our snap settings right from this window. But we could also do it from the options menu right down here snap grid. And we could enable snapping with this keyboard shortcut or the grid with this keyboard shortcut, which I tend to find a bit quicker. And then finally, we have locking which is off by default. If we right click it, we can see the dialog that goes with locking and we can choose the parameters we want to lock. For example, we could lock the time selection by creating one, turn locking on. Now we can't adjust that time selection. We can't create a new one and we can't adjust this one or remove it once we turn off locking. And then we can. And we could also lock many other parameters, like our items in full. Then we can't move or edit our items at all. We could turn off locking, and then we can. But again, this is off by default. And we could also choose it in the options menu. Go down here to locking, and then enable it from here, or open the settings from here, or use the keyboard shortcuts over here, which again, are going to be a bit quicker. So that's the default toolbar buttons in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!